This tutorial is going to walk you through the process of running a batch in OCLC and acting on it, adding your holdings, exporting the items, and show you how that process goes. So I'm going to use uh, a sample batch I had from earlier of about 10 items. And what I'm going to do first is make sure that my tools are set up properly. So I want to make sure under Tools and Options that under Batch I have the Bibliographic Record Export clicked. That has to be clicked for it to work properly. Next, I'm going to see what I have on my local save file. And yeah, I have some things from earlier that I already loaded. So I'm going to clean those out just for simplicity's sake. Um, highlight it as items, and I'm going to do a delete record. Yes, I'm sure, because I've already loaded those. So now it's kind of all clear. I'm going to go to Batch, Enter Bibliographic Search Keys. This is where I'm setting up what I want to search for initially in OCLC, how to run my, my batch. So what I want to do first is click Import and find the file, that import file that I created earlier. It always asks if you want to delete your original import file. I typically don't, just in case something goes awry. I like to hold on to it. I can always delete it later. You need to make sure that your default index is OCLC number. That kind of sets the parameter for what you want um, OCLC to search. And then you want to choose your local file where you want to send those records that it retrieves. In this case, I'm just going to use my default um, bib file. Right? It's kind of my default local save file. So I'll click on Save and Close. So it's going to give an OCLC the information about what I want to search. Then I'm going to go to Batch, Process Batch. And here's the first step. So what you want to do is click that local save file. This is my default bib file. And I want it to run a search for all those items in that file. If I click on OK, what it's doing is running in a batch. It's going to do a search for those 10 items instead of doing an individual search for those things. It takes just a little bit of time, but really not too bad. In this case, with 10 items, it doesn't take very long. So it gives me a report when it's done. It tells me that it successfully searched for 10 items. Perfect. Now what I want to do is look at those items in my local save file. So there's a quick kind of shortcut button for that. And it wants me to confirm which file I want to open. And yeah, I want my local default bib save file. And so what it gives me are those 10 items that I just searched for. So now I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to act on them or tell the system what kind of actions I want to take. I want to add my holdings for my library, and I want to export these. And I'm going to tell it to stop out for me to do updates. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to go back to Batch, Process Batch, and I'm going to tell the system to run those actions. I'm going to choose that local save file. I'm going to choose on live record actions and export. So it's telling it to run that request to update holdings and export. And click on OK. So now it's processing my exports and my updating of holdings. And again, it doesn't take terribly long. Now obviously if you have a larger file or more records that you're running at one time, it'll take longer. And yet, compared with running those items or searching for those items individually, it's a huge time saving. So when it's done, it gives me two reports to let me know if I've had successful actions. So I successfully exported 10 items, great. And I successfully um, updated my holdings on 10 items, perfect. All right. And then what it does automatically is it automatically logs me off of CLC. Okay, from here, I'm going to go to my local ILS. We use Voyager. And I'll show you. I'm going to import those items. I'm going to go to a previous file. I'd already opened something in my basic... Uh, file where I send my exports from OCLC, and there's the 10 items that I just exported and added my holdings to. So I can check all of these and click OK and bring them all in. And you can you know, obviously save these individually. You can use a macro to do a more rapid means of saving and adding holdings and adding items. That's going to be very individual depending on what ILS you use and what preference you want to do. So what we'll probably do in the future is add a few more tutorials about different methods that we use to work with Voyager for importing and adding those basic holdings. And we'll probably also do some about using macros to speed up the process.